Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Uh, and today we're going to be taking a look, or a first look, at uh, my uh, upgrade to my home server. Now this is my home server, this is nothing to do with my web server. I will place a link to the video from the old girl when I originally made her. And I built her not long after I first moved into my current place. Well, she's been battered and abused over the years. We've had hard drive changes in there. Um, ripping heat sinks out. There's actually an LHD 14 in there at the moment, and to be, well, I'll get to that. Um, but it's time for me to make a change, and uh, we're I'm making some changes because all of my rigs are going to be getting changed over the coming months, and you're going to be getting to see all of this on the channel. Um, so we're going to be starting with the uh, server, which will be relatively quickly for me to be able to get built. Show you what the you know the way I'm going with my server and the, you know the angles that I'm going to be you know going for with and what I want it to do. Uh, then obviously we're going to be having my main rig. Um, the, the the name on the table at the moment is Orca, but things are already there's the possibilities of things kind of expanding and, and evolving away from the the specs that are planned as Orca at the moment and be, could be and. I think the word expanding is, is probably as good as I'd like to go, but we'll see with that later on. Obviously, we've already got the Nurberg rig, which is my gaming rig, and all I really need to do with that now is get things, all the cables and everything kind of set up, <coughs> get R Factor 2 working on there. Um, I've already been playing um, uh, Project Cars, and basically then we can start doing a few videos of that, of me with some downtime. But, the server. Um, for me, now, I... <laughs> This video is going to be about us having a chat, me explaining stuff, and then I'll go into more and more details as we you know, progress through about the way I want to go with stuff. For me, my home server is a central point for all of my systems uh, in the house. To the point there that where I have, if you can hear any fans, it's because we're testing um, uh, four 7970s just here in a case labs case. But anyway. Um, my home server is a central point for all of my machines. My uh, main system hooks up into it. Um, uh, the, the, like the, when we do the bench rigs, they all have access to it. My phone has access to it. My laptops have access to it. Um, it like the, the printer has access to it. It's just I have a, a central kind of network and everything goes out on Ethernet cables or via home plugs through that. And everything can see and have access to the server for storage, excuse me, nice cup of tea, um, uh, for storage and for backups and all kinds of stuff. And I really couldn't live without it, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, obviously, I have an immense amount of storage in there. The original server, when I first built it, had 12 one terabyte spin point F1s in there. It's now actually just got six uh, drives in there, but they're two terabyte Western Digital Greens. Uh, when we go into the new server, it will, st it will still have the six set up but I'll also have one redundant and it's set up in a RAID 6 so we have uh, effectively two drives as parity so I can have two drives die and not lose any um, uh, hardware. Now we'll start off with this one uh, in there at the moment is in fact what I'm going to do uh, yeah I'll bring you in for a, a better look As long as I don't get too caught up with all the cables, which has already happened, I do apologise. But anyway, let me just have a look, see what we're looking at. There we go. Right. Spin that round. Done. Right, this is the server as it's been for the last couple of months. Now, on the front, back planes. Uh, I did this just for, uh, I wanted it to look industrial, I wanted it to look professional. They're brilliant, you can pop hard drives in and out like that, although we've got them down here, there we go, hard drive in there, so one, two, three, four, five, six, so that's my last hard drive, job done, then I've got the six free above. Now these are awesome, these hard drive, the, these are, uh, I can't remember who makes them now, um, Icy Box. Um, these are brilliant, uh, they're about £90 each, uh, if you're looking to build something professional it's really, really good thing I found with them though is uh, they, they do let a lot of dust in and they can get quite noisy. Obviously three hard drives in each. When you have a look at the back, the um, over here the fan is uh, only an 80mm fan and although I've swapped them all out for Noctua fans and I've got 
noxious speed cables in there to make the fan spin a bit quieter. It can still get a bit noisy. And also, when there's no dust filter in, it does bring a lot of dust in. Um, so we've got those in there. My, uh, my Ray card is an Adaptec, and I'm just trying to remember the, uh, the code number off the top of my head. But essentially, it's a 12-port internal, 4-port external. It's a 50145 or something, I can't remember. Like I said, I really got without taking the D14 off. Um, doo -doo -doo. 51245. So I've got an Adaptec 51245. It's PCI Express. Uh, it's got PCI Express 8 lane. Um, it's got 512 meg of cache. Um, 12 port internal. Uh, 1.2 gigahertz dual core, uh, it's Radon chip, does everything. I, I got this one in the end to because um, I wanted to use RAID 6 and one of the other ones that I did didn't. I can go external and have SAS lines split off everywhere if I want to but I wanted to go for speed. Um, I have to put an immense amount of data through uh, the cache on this to overload it. Like I literally have to put a single random written 2 gigabyte file for it to, for it to go spaz. Um, I've also got this, uh, it's a 4 point um, network card, 4 port network card. Each of the 4 ports have their own gigabit uh, controller. This was at one point when I was using the computer as a router to assign IPs to the rest of the network. Since then I've uh, upgraded to like an external router and I paid quite a bit of money for it but that does a really really good job so I kind of <coughs> took that feature away from the, the server altogether. The board that's in there is an Asus P7 H57DV Evo and it's the top of the range P57 board. Uh, it's got onboard video which is what I used. Um, it's got an i3540 in there. I think it's running at about 3.6 gigahertz and that was just so I had it on a 160 bus to have the memory running at 1600 and there's 4 gig of memory in there. Um, there's a solid state drive in the bottom, it's, um, uh, it's actually the only OCZ solid state drive I've ever had not break, uh, so it stayed in the bottom. All of the other ones I've ever had are broken, which is why I will never tell you to buy them. Um, and to be perfectly honest with you, when this comes out now, uh, I'm not going to be putting it back, because I've got, you know I mean, I trust other stuff a lot more, so I'm not going to be using that solid state drive again. Uh, hard drive, power supply. Corsair HX 650 watt, literally has not skipped a beat since I've had it. Um, absolutely brilliant. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why I always tend to use Corsair power supplies in my own personal rigs. And this one, I paid for. That's how much I liked it. I bought it with my own money. It was back before the days when I could ring them up and go, give me one of them. Um, so yeah, that got bought with my own money. Uh, so that is the server as it is at the moment. Uh, I think that currently there's about uh, there's about four, maybe five terabytes worth of stuff on there. Although I do need to have a bit of a clean up. I've not done any backups for a little while either. So moving the camera back again. And I'll get it all set up so that you can see me. Maybe you don't want to. Right. So now trailing cables behind. The new server, uh, it's been a long time since we've seen the R3, um, but I kept the original R3. This is the one from when I did the R3 versus H2 review. I love these cases, I really do. Uh, and just to show you how much I like them, I'm going to be building my server in this one um, because I still think they do an amazing job. Um, obviously, it's got dust filtering in the front. Uh, if I pull the front off, ugh. So dust filtering in the front, absolutely perfect. Um, sound deadening all over the place so we can make it nice and quiet. Uh, got enough hard drive um, racks in the front for me. I'm pretty sure it's got seven in the front. Um, so we've got enough room for the hard drives, but with also with the fans blowing, it'll be able to end a nice decent gap, so we'll be able to keep the hard drives quite cool as well. Um, there's a fan slot in the side for in the summer because uh, the, there's no active cooling on my RAID card and it can get a bit warmer. It's, been, it's designed to be run in a, um, a data centre which is generally, they run at about 10 degrees, they're air conditioned to within an inch of their lives, it's always cold in there. And the fans that you have in the data centres as well, they're all like 220 CFM, like silly blowy fans, you know what I mean, making loads of noise, keep everything really cool and stable. Obviously, I can't do that with mine. 
Um, so in the summer, I've got the option of uh, taking the side off, fitting a fan filter and having a little bit more airflow blow over that ray card um, if we get any silly warm weather. Um, right, motherboard, Z68 UD3H B3. Now a lot of you are going to be thinking to yourself, why are you going Z68 now when we've got uh, the next generation stuff coming? Obviously I've got to pick my words very wisely at the moment because of NDAs, but this will do the job for me perfectly fine. Um, the uh, newer stuff, because I'm using an i3 T120, the newer version of that is months away. Uh, and to be perfectly honest with you, it, the current i3 is overkill, so I don't really need, I'm only really doing this just for the sake of doing it, to be perfectly honest with you. It's just to get an upgrade, a little bit of a fresh start, and so yeah. So we're using this. The reason why I picked the HB3 is because it's got uh, all the onboard video stuff hanging off the back. We've got um, uh, DVI, we've got HDMI, uh, there's a normal VGA should I need it. It's, it'll do the job absolutely spondulically. It's obviously got the, uh, uh, should I need it, it's ready for the um, uh, Gen 3 stuff but what I really wanted it for was uh, SATA 3 and um, USB 3. That's got all that on there. So we're going to be sticking a little 2120 i3 in there. Uh, memory wise, just to go with the, the theme, I'm going to be using 8 gigabyte of Corsair low profile um, Vengeance in white. Again, kind of just goes with the theme. Fans throughout the case will be Noctua. What fans I'm going to be using, I don't know yet. I have got quite a selection of Focus Flow fans. Um, uh, but I may need focus flow fans for uh, another system that I've got to build, so I don't know. Might just be able to get some more fans. I'm not sure, I don't know yet, but the cooler that I'm going to be going to be using, and it's one that once we've built the rig, we'll review it as well, is the new low profile cooler from um, Noctua. It's their first new product for quite a while, to be honest with you, and it's, a, it's quite a funky product because technically it's dual fan. Um, and by that I mean it's got the focus flow fan on the top but if you wanted a really really low profile cooler like for a HTPC or something like that there's also underneath a 92 millimeter fan um, so although it's not necessarily 100% necessary for me this could be really really good for a lot of you out there really really short on uh, or tight on space but uh, I'm going to be using this because it will give me a nice bit of airflow over the board. Obviously, not a massive amount on it of it because I'm not going to be I'm going to be setting it up to be quiet. Um, but yeah, so I thought it would be a good excuse to get some Noctua loving in there because um, I want Noctua fans in it anyway. And uh, I'm very much of the opinion that, especially if you've got a white rig, that the uh, the Noctua fans really do look the uh, the Kahuna's. So we've got that. Now, power supply, because I am going quite for quiet, I'm going to be using the Silver Power 460 watt uh, fanless. Now, this is a uh, gold rated, so gold rated efficiency. Um, but the reason why, like I said, I decided to use it, I'm just going to try and get it out quick. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, it's 100% it's modular, which is nice, but if you have a look, it's completely fanless. There's not a fan inside. It's not one that just turns on whenever it needs it. Make sure that I've not unclipped my microphone. I haven't. But it is completely fanless. Um, and yeah, I thought I would uh, give this a chance basically because uh, it's quite a, it's quite a niche item. But the way I see this is uh, there's a lot of people out there with like. Um, music studio systems, uh, do you know what I mean, yeah, studio rigs, people that want real, real silence. Um, this could be perfect for you, because, uh, let's face it, a music studio rig doesn't necessarily need uh, an immense amount of power. Uh, unlike a video rendering system or something like that, a music uh, editing system doesn't need that much uh, CPU grunt. Um, so something like this could be absolutely perfect for you because this could be working away in the background, passive graphics card in there, working away on your mixes and everything like that, or even recording, and your system could effectively not be making any noise whatsoever. Um, 
Now one thing I will say about the Noctua is obviously I've got that active um, cooler. I've also still got the No Fan completely passive cooler as well, which I may play with afterwards uh, to see how it goes and see how I get along with it. I don't want the, the, the server to end up being too warm. I do still want airflow through it, um, but there are possibilities. Um, and obviously the good thing about this is, like I said, it's uh, 460 watt, which is ample for a, a lot of systems. You could build a gaming system on this if you really wanted to. But it's 100% modular as well, which is also quite nice. So you can still make a tidy rig. Uh, and like I said, considering that there is no fan in it, I actually think it looks the part as well. The cables are all pretty good as well. Although I am going to do a dedicated video just on this. Uh, in fact, I might do some dedicated videos on the other stuff. So we've talked about pretty much everything, but many of you may have noticed, the eagle-eyed amongst you, notice these things. And I'll pull them to the front quickly. Now, these are UPS's, uninterruptible power supplies. <coughs> now the, the basic idea of these is they're essentially, and this is just a quick skim because I'm going to do another video. These are basically just our big batteries. Um, and so, for argument's sake, if your power uh, gets cut off, do you know what I mean? You have a, do you know what I mean? A lightning storm or something like that. You or do you know what I mean? They're, they're working on the electricity supply around you. They turn the electric off. You don't know. You could have been mid render on your machine or something in the middle of playing a game or something like that. Bump. That's it. Your machine goes off. Well, essentially, what these do is they give you time to be able to save your work, shut your systems down or anything you know, like that that you'd want to do. Um, you can even set them up with USB so it, as soon as the electric gets cut they'll uh, literally tell your computer to save everything and shut down safely uh, so that you never have that chance of like, losing your work or even uh, um, with a lot of stuff if you just turn the electric off sometimes that can create havoc with your system and you, you, you can end up losing your, your work, um, buggering up your files, all kinds of stuff can go wrong. Also, they're kind of, they're like, um, uh, a lot of us have, well, especially when we pull so much from the wall, we have um, like surge protection towers. Uh, and that's another thing that these do. So if you had a lightning strike near you on one of your electric fields or something, if you had a massive surge of electricity come up through into your house, which could then damage any, you know, sensitive electrical equipment, these will stop it and they come with um, like an insurance policy as well. This one's up to £25,000 lifetime guarantee. Anything that you had on this, if it was a lightning storm, it could practically hit your roof or something. And it, they, they're saying as long as it was connected to this, you'd be all right. Um, but I've got a massive one, which will obviously probably end up being uh, the server or my main rig. But I've also got a smaller one. Now, this is something that I'm going to talk to you again in another video about in some great depth. Because if your um, if your if your electric goes, a lot of the time your uh, your internet could still work, but you wouldn't be able to use it because your modem would be off or your router would be off. But the the actual signal will still be coming into the house. If you had one of these running, and literally you had one of the small ones, and you've just got it on your modem, you've just got your sorry, you've just got your modem and your router running off of this, which you'd easily get like two or three hours use out of it. You could then use your laptop, still have access to the internet, still have access to the outside world, whereas everyone in the blackout area is sat there with candles on, can't do anything, can't get on Facebook, can't send emails, you know, can't do any, send any important work or anything like that. Yet you can because you spent, I mean, this one is £60. You've got this and it just sits there and literally as soon as the electric goes off, bosh, and everything will still keep working. Now, to me, that is an absolute genius idea. Uh, and it's one of the things that's one of the reasons why I've got these two things because these are now going to become a part of my own, you know, static equipment for, you know, so I've got the safety of the surge protection, um, also going to be able to, uh, if, if we have brownouts and spikes and all that kinds of stuff, I'll be okay. Also, if the electric drops out, like I said, I'm still going to be able to get online. Um, another good thing with me personally, especially with the, the Big Daddy, is if I'm rendering a video for YouTube, and some of the big videos can take like two or three hours to render, at least if uh, the electric goes off, as long as we've not just started the render, it, it would be able to finish. But if it hadn't, I'd be able to stop the render, save the files, so that, and, you know, and then shut the machine down. 
so that then uh, when the electric did come back I'd just be able to open the files up again it'd all be back in the right place and I could start the render clear without having to go in and re-edit everything because um, it can take some time to get all the you know the edits ready and stuff so this is what we're going to be doing uh, over the weekend is getting all this kind of stuff set up obviously I've got to um, uh, test the UPSs I've got to get the server built um, get the, the power supply in and have a look at the power supply uh, so there's a fair bit to do we also need to retire the old server bless her heart she's covered in dust she's had a she's had a hard life she's done she's done us proud um, but it's time for her to go to uh, silicon heaven now and put her feet up with some fluffy slippers on and some um, dyed blue hair and start drinking her chamomile tea uh, until I smash her over the head with a sledgehammer because I don't want to get rid of the case. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you were all thinking about your nans and stuff and then I said smashed her over the head with a sledgehammer. Anyway, yes, I do need help. But yeah, this is what we're going to be getting up to. So yeah, let us know what you think, guys. Um, in the comments, as always, I've got uh, an immense amount of work to get done on this. Um, but yeah. Yeah, let me know what you think, and then uh, if there's any people that have actually got anything that's actually worth me covering, I will try and make sure I do it. But I think the most important thing to come out of the, the change of this system is going to be the UPSs and how we get it set up. And I, I will try my best to um, uh, go through all this with you so that it's uh, so we actually get it covered and explain how it works. And uh, it, the only thing that makes it a bit of a, a problem, excuse me, is um, basically uh, getting all of my like uh, internet into one place so that we can see it all and then start turning electric off and stuff. But I'm sure I will try and work something out. But anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you. I'm going to get Straubs to go and make me another cup of tea. This is Tiny Tom Logan. Don't shake your head. This is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out. <laughs>